For centuries, London street and landmarks have shaped the lives and works of writers. Authors including T.S. Eliot, William Shakespeare and Virginia Woolf have immortalized the city in their works, documenting the life in the capital. From historic pubs to churches, to writers' houses and royal parks, the city is filled with landmarks that celebrate its literary heritage. Today, I am going to take you to one such area of London, which connects three most famous writers from three different centuries. Geoffrey Chaucer, William Shakespeare and Charles Dickens. If you have watched my vlog on Globe Theatre, I am pretty sure that you already know the area. Yes, it's none other than the Southwark district of London. This district of London was renowned in the Elizabethan time for the theatres it contained, including the famous Globe where Shakespeare performed and for which Shakespeare wrote a number of his plays. As we walk down the lanes of Southwark, I am going to take you to the famous cathedral where literary giants like Chaucer, Dickens and Shakespeare prayed and then we'll head towards the George Inn a 400-year-old pub where all these writers sat and drank. As a bonus, I'm also going to take you to a place which was made famous by Chaucer in his masterpiece Canterbury Tales. The Southwark Cathedral is a little Gothic gem that dates back to 606 AD and is London's oldest Gothic structure. Can you believe that this has been the place of Christian worship for over thousand years? This church is known for its literary connections and these literary connections are very well depicted in the blue plaque that rests on the outside wall of the church. The famous court poet and the contemporary of Geoffrey Chaucer, Mr. John Gover, was a resident of the church in the beginning of 15th century until his death in 1408. By the way, Gover is best known for his three allegorical poems, Mirror de Loma, Vlox Cementus and Confessio Edmantus. All these three works were written in three different languages. Comment below the languages in which these three works were written and let me see how genius and well-read my audience is. William Shakespeare lived five minutes away from this church when he was writing for Globe Theatre. He must have been a frequent visitor of the church and this is the reason why even today celebrations are held in this church on Shakespeare's birthday each year. As you walk around the church, you will also find a memorial of Shakespeare. The sculpture was made by Henry McCarthy in 1912, shows Shakespeare resting outside the Globe Theatre. Immediately above the McCarthy structure is a delightful stained glass window that depicts many of Shakespeare's favourite characters, which was designed and made by Christopher Webb in 1954. To add to the list of famous writers who graced the church hall, I am happy to share that Charles Dickens attended meetings and bell ringing practices in this church before his death in 1870. The cathedral's patchwork architecture is a testament to its past, as do the many monuments and memorials inside and outside the church. These are reminders of the rich history of the Sadag and its association with the major literary figures like Chaucer, Shakespeare and Dickens. A few meters away from the Southwark Cathedral, you'll find the famous site of the Tabartan. Today, the inn has been sadly gone, but the courtyard known as the Tabard Yard is still there and a blue plaque has been installed denoting its historic significance. This historic inn was originally established around 1300s and was one of the inns that fell in the old Roman route between London, Canterbury and Dover. Being on the route to Canterbury, the inn attracted Christian pilgrims who headed on their annual visit to the shrine 
of Thomas Becket in the Canterbury Cathedral. The popularity of the Tabard Inn with these pilgrims was the reason why Chaucer chose this as the starting point for his famous work, The Canterbury Tales. This place was owned by Harry Belly, the host in Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, and it's described in the first few lines of Chaucer's work as the location where the pilgrims first met in their journey to Canterbury. Now, those of you who have read Chaucer must be knowing that the proprietor of this inn, Harry Belly, also becomes the host to Chaucer's Pilgrim, launching a competition to see who tells the best story. And he even accompanies them as a guide to the journey. By the way, he also announces a prize to the best storyteller. Do you know what prize was that? Comment below right now. Before I visited this place, I always thought that the Tabartin was a fictional location used by Chaucer. But today, as I stand here, I am amazed to see that it was actually a real Tabardin that Chaucer spoke about in the Canterbury Tales. However, in 1669, the Great Fire of London destroyed many of these inns, including this Tabardin. Luckily, due to the popularity of this inn, it was rebuilt straight away, although it was subsequently renamed as the Talbot Inn. Now, this Talbot Inn strived for the next 150 years, but the arrival of the railways in the mid-1800s led to the dramatic decline of the amount of passing bys, because of which this Talbot Inn fell into despair and was eventually demolished in 1873. Adjacent to the Tabard Inn is this Sadag pub, which dates back to 400 years. It also has some really amazing literary connections. This pub was situated just a few meters away from Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. And it is known that William Shakespeare had visited this pub in his early days. Charles Dickens was another frequent visitor of this pub when it was still a coffee house. He even mentioned it in his famous novel Little Dorrit in chapter 22 to be exact. If you have read Little Dorrit, you will know that young Pip visits George Inn where he writes the begging letters. George Inn has existed here since medieval times, but in 1677, it was rebuilt after the Great Fire of London that destroyed most of the Southwark district. This 300-year-old building is pretty stunning, with two floors of interlocking oak beam dining rooms, latticed windows, open fireplaces and long galleries. By the way, fun fact, this pub is the last remaining galleried coaching inn in the entire London. So with this, I end my compilation of the best literary locations that London has to offer, which are closely connected to Chaucer, Shakespeare and Dickens. London has captured the imagination of authors for centuries and its historic streets, stations, pubs, parks and iconic landmarks have been preserved down on the pages of the most treasured novels and poetry. I hope to uncover many more such literary gems in future with my hashtag literary landmark vlog series. If you like this vlog series, then do consider subscribing the channel and also sharing the videos with the other literary aspirants. That's it from my side for this video lecture. I'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com.